to whom he was, he was not a sinner, but he became sin that we might find life, we might find forgiveness. Because he's life. That's what he does. That's the work of a wonderful Savior. And then he went on to say to Martha in the 26th verse, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. You may die in this life, and we will die should the Lord tarry. We will die in this life. But he said, if you live and believe in me, you shall never die. That means when we die, we live. Okay? That's what Paul said. He said, for me to live is Christ. But to die is gain. In other words, I've got a new life. But as we see it yet at night that is waiting for us on the other side of this life. The moment we close our eyes in this life, immediately it opens up in the next. Mm -hmm. In the presence of the Lord. Amen. In the presence of Jesus. Praise God. And so God is saying to the to the church tonight, everybody that is seated yet, yeah, God is amazing, you know that. He's totally amazing. As I was driving my grandkids to school this morning, and I was on my way back home, I said, Oh, you know, Lord, what am I gonna I was just about I was thinking about I was thinking about asking the Lord, Sister Tracy. I was saying, Lord, what am I gonna talk to the people about tonight? Before I could ask the question, God gave me the answer. You know what? Because he knows my thoughts. You know what? He knew exactly what I was going to ask him. So he gave me the message before I even asked him. So I said, oh, yeah. God, you're good. I won't even ask it now because I know you've given it to me. Let me tell you that God is saying to us, it's in three simple words, he says, I am the giver of life. You've got to understand, I am the giver of life. There's no man that can give you life. It's only Jesus. No man can take your life. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus. Mm -hmm. No man can give you life. Mm -hmm. Only Jesus. He's the giver of life. Mm -hmm. And if I might and make an addition myself, he's also the taker of life. Mm -hmm. yes. Because he's really saying if it's the body of Christ, the church living for God, he says, thank you so much for living for me. Now I want to take you home. Your life is done here. And you're coming home to be with me. You're going to sit at my table. You're going to dine with me. Amen. Isn't it wonderful? I mean, really, we really got to want to be, really have to understand that. And then, in this life, he says, He that believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And if any man, whosoever, lives and believes in me, he shall absolutely, this word never is absolute, shall never. How about taking on life in Jesus? How about we're taking on the new life in Jesus? I don't know who's the sport tonight. But how about, how about taking on the new life in Jesus so that you can live a glorious life in Him and still have the promise of eternal life with Him? Amen. When you leave this world. To say this also tonight is that the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus is in the church. And the Spirit of Jesus is in this house tonight. Amen. It's among Praise us God. today. His Spirit is moving among us here today. Amen. And God is indeed ministering to us. He's touching us. If you will receive it, He's touching us. If you will believe it, He's touching us. If you will believe it, He's reaching into somebody's heart tonight. If you will believe it, He wants to change somebody. I know you... We all, may all think we're believers yet at night. It may be so, but who knows what we are on the inside. I don't know. But change is here. The giver of life is here. The opportunity to enter into this new life right as where we are is given to us yet at night. God is the giver of life. His spirit is in, this, in the church. It's in this gathering yet today. And rightfully so, the Bible says that Jesus is the God of the living. The God of life is the God of the living and not of the dead. Jesus doesn't rule the dead 
but only those who are alive in him and believe in him. I turn my attention and your attention to the life-giving substance, the river of life, the water of life that he has imparted to the church, that he has promised the church some hundreds of years ago before its fulfillment. When he spoke to the prophet Joel who prophesied and said, it shall come to pass in the last day, saith God, that I will pour out of my spirit, my all flesh. And Peter stood up on the day of Pentecost and preached and quoted exactly word for word from the scriptures. And he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, that I will pour out of my spirit. Now, this is how good God is. This is how good God is. He said, I will pour out of my spirit. I'm not going to borrow anybody else's spirit. I'm, in other words, he's, he's really saying, I'm going to give myself to you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And he's, he's not going to give himself to us in his omnipresence presence as per se. But it, by his Holy Spirit, which is indeed yes. omnipresent. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And God in us, the Bible says, God in us is the hope of glory. Amen. His life is a life-giving substance, taking you to a place where when Jesus was compelled by the Spirit of the Lord as he ministers, ministered to his disciples in John 4, right in the beginning of that chapter, he said to his disciples, I must needs go through Samaria. That's how much, that's how important life is to him. Why am I saying that? It's because he was going to meet, he foresaw that he was going to meet a lady at the well. And that she needed life. She didn't have life. She may have thought she had life, but in essentially she did not have life. Jesus said, this is a, I want to fulfill this need. I want to, get, I want to get this need filled up today. Brothers, you go and do your thing. You go to the marketplace and you go and buy meat and victuals. And, and when, you, when you're ready, you can come back. But I got to go this way, you go that way, and I'm going to minister to this lady to give her the proper food, and you can go and buy the natural food. And as he approached the well, the Bible says he sat down on Jacob's well. He just sat there. And as, as the clock ticked by, and it got to midnight where the sun was at its zenith, and here comes the lady with a water pot. And uh, sees Jesus sitting on the well and uh, Jesus begins a conversation with her and Jesus simply says this uh, uh, can you I see you, you're getting ready to, to, to draw some water from the well can you get some for me also the lady looks at him and you know what the lady says you're a Jew who cares what nationality I am but because of the because of the times, because of the day, because of the situation, because there was a lot of prejudice among those of his day, between the Samaritans and the, and the, and the Gentiles. He recognized, she recognized Jesus as being a Jew. He was a Jew. And nothing is said about that, but how do we know that he was a Jew? That how did she know, rather, that Jesus was a Jew and she was a Samaritan but Jesus said look I'm, I'm, I'm not prejudiced I'm just asking for water if you want to give me water I'm human like you and I am thirsty and I need to drink can you give me some water but you put that to him but you know how what I surmise and draw from that the way he dressed the Jews and the Samaritans may look like they dressed alike but they weren't dressed alike she made it out there and then. I don't know whether it's by his facial features or not, but I'm almost certain it was the way he presented himself. And so the Bible goes on to say, then she goes on with the conversation, and uh, she said, uh, but sir, you've got nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. And Jesus said to her, well, if you know who I am, 
And who is it that asks you for water? You shall ask, you will be one to ask him for water. You see, nevertheless, you can come to this world, you can drink, and you can come every day at midday and drink, but the water that you're drinking, it's going to cause you to come back again. Because there's no life in this water. In fact, the water that you are drinking is life in this world. And that because life itself doesn't satisfy you, it doesn't give you that ultimate joy. It doesn't fulfill the ultimate need. You go back, you're going to go back home, and your water's going to get finished. And you're going to come back to the well again. And you're going to say, I'm going to get some more water. Let me tell you, those wells run dry. Yes. Yes. Point is this, those wells hold no life. Mm. The spiritual life that Jesus was alluding to. He says, but if you ask of me, the water, I will give you water that when you drink it, mm. you shall have no reason to come back to it. Mm. Yes. Because the water that you drink that comes from me, mm. he says, it will, it will quench your thirst. Yes. It will be satisfying. Mm. It will be fulfilling. You'll find joy in that spirit. You'll find joy in that water. You'll, you'll never come back. You'll never come back. Because it's joy unspeakable. And full of glory. Life is the life giver, people. It's the life giver. And Jesus may not may not be here in it in the flesh tonight. But I can assure you today, as this preacher is preaching to you the word of the Lord. As sure as I'm standing here today, His Spirit, Jesus, by His Spirit, is in this room. Amen. Amen. And can I say, can I make an addition and say that He's searching every heart, He's searching every life, and He's trying to dig in, He's trying to delve in, He's trying to touch you. But sometimes, because we feel it, and because we don't really want it, but we know we need it, and so we put up a blockade, we put up a barrier. So when His Spirit tries to prod, and the water tries to get in, and, and tries to weaken the walls of resistance and then you know wetness and you know when the wall comes wet it kind of gets flimsy and, and falls on but it keeps on trying and trying but you put up another wall and not, let me tell you you may also well break down your own wall yes. yeah. and allow the water to flow in he says he said when you drink of this water and in fact it was in john 7 33 and 34 the bible says it was that the, the day of the feast, the great day of the feast, where Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living. Oh, I just the word coming again. Living, living water. Living water. Hallelujah. And what did the Bible go on to say? It says, He was prophesying about the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Amen. He says the Holy Ghost wasn't as yet given, but he was foretelling that it was coming just in a few years' time. My goodness me. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all one accord in one place, and there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and if you thought all of the house, every day was seated, and they were all filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit of the Lord gave them the utterance. A new thing, a new thing was taking place. The giver of life had entered into the upper room. See, when Jesus was going away, before he was crucified, before he laid down his life, he told his disciples, I've got to go away. And where I'm going at this time, you cannot come, but one day you will go. But right, not, not right now. But he said, in the meantime, when I go I'm going to come to you again. I'm going to come to you. I'm going away, but I'm going to come back. And I'm going to be your advocate. And I'm going to be a comforter. Thank you, Lord. When I come, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to walk with you in the spirit. I'm going to talk with you in the spirit. And I'm going to live with you in the spirit. He said, except you abide in me. My 
the words abide in you. Yes, Jesus. You, you cannot bear fruit. Life is life. It's only life. It's a, people, you have to understand tonight. You know, you can do whatever you want to in this life. You may, you may find satisfaction. That's going to go for a little while. But it's the satisfaction and the thrills you get out of life. They are seasonal. It will come to an end. If, you, if the season is going to keep on closing in you, it's going to come to an end. But this Holy Ghost, this life, will be with you from the time you get it to the time you receive it until the time you pass on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, I'm the life giver. Yes, hallelujah. He said, I'm Jesus. the life giver. And as a result of this dialogue with this, with this woman, the Bible says she was so, she was so taken up. The Bible says she dropped the water pot and she ran. And you know what she did? She went to tell all the men in Samaria, come see a man that told me everything about myself. Is he not the Christ? Is he not Messiah? Is he not the anointed one? And with that, let me tell you, she created a stir among the men of Samaria. And it's almost, there was almost an inter, instantaneous harvest. From his word to her, who were carrying the word to them, they came to see. They said, we, we will hear what you're saying, lady, but we want to see for ourselves. And they came, and they saw the life giver. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Okay. We believe the harvest is here. Yeah. And today I'm coming to a close. Thank you, Jesus. That if you're here tonight, you can receive this life. Yes. As much as He's present among us as a body, as a corporate body, He wants to be within us. To be more intimate with us by His Spirit. His life. And where there is life, death could not withstand, or death could not withstand the onslaught of life. As Jesus told it, because Nicodemus thought that he was living the kind of life that, that God wanted him to live. But he came to Jesus tonight because it didn't seem that he was quite sure and Nicodemus came and said good master I know that you are a teacher that has come from God because there's no man that can do these miracles that you do except God be with him how is God with him by spirit how is God with you by spirit amen Jesus said, you must be born again. Yeah. I thought it was quite an unusual way, for lack of a better term, to express this. An unusual way in which he, can I say, answered or referred to the question that Nicodemus had asked. How can you say, I said you're a good man, I said you're good, I called you rabbi. And you do a lot of miracles, and no man can do these miracles like you do, except God will be with you. And then you say to me, you must be born again. Why is that so? Nicodemus, you need life. You got religion. You know the word of God. But in and of itself, the word of God is a letter. And it is dead. I must suggest you, when I the word of God is dead. But to some, it is dead. Because there's no life in it. Why is it lacking life? It lacks life because there is no spirit. For the word of God, it says in Hebrews 4.12, is quick. It is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul, of the spirit, of the joint, and of the marrow. It discerns the thought and the intent of the heart. It is That word quick means alive. So in the King James Version it says quick. In other versions it says alive. It's life. It's life. It only comes alive. That's why Paul could write and say the letter kills. We're talking about the word of God. The letter of the word kills. But the spirit brings life. 
The Spirit gives life. And that's what we are about here today is the giver of life. He wants to give you life. And the Lord said to Nicodemus, if you want life, if you want that word that you already know, that you already understand, if you want life in that word to speak to you, you need the life-giving substance that can stir up life in that word and begin to speak to you. That's not mere knowledge, Nicodemus. He's talking about life. He's talking about salvation. He's talking about truth. Amen. And then the Nicodemus went on and said, well, yeah, Lord. And the Lord said, you've got to be born again to get that life. And he said, oh, I'm an old man. I'm well into my 70s. That's just a guess. Do you want me to go back into my mother's womb, become a baby and be born again? She said, no. You've got to be born of the water and of the spirit. If you want life, you've got to you, you've got to take on the new birth. You've got to be baptized in His name. You've got to be filled with His Spirit. There's a new name written down in book. You've got to take it on. That's when new life comes. And the Holy Spirit is life. And the wind blows where it desires. And we hear the sound thereof. We don't know where it's come from. And we don't know where it's going. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. And so this is an invitation to us tonight. If we need refreshing in the Holy Ghost, it is here tonight. If we need to receive the Holy Spirit, it is here tonight. If we need life, if we're seeking life, it is here tonight, tonight for us to receive. Don't think because this is a home meeting. And we're coming here, uh, you know, solely because we want to support us, the melody of the family. And that's all well and good. But let me tell you also that life incumbent is in this place. Amen. You know, this is amazing. Life incumbent is in this place. Jesus is life, so he's incumbent. That's his office. He's operating right now. He's operating with that life. He's saying, hey, guys, I'm here. Is anybody going to come in? Is anybody going to receive me? And if you do, he said, I'm going to receive you. See, this is no secret what God can do. Whatever, you know, it's, it's no secret what God can do. But James says, James in his epistle writes and says, you take one step, and he'll take the next step. So as we draw closer to each other, you take one step, this way, he takes one step that way. Amen. Thank you. One step, one step. So we, we're we clinging to life. Mm. We're holding on to life. Yes. We've been embedded in life. We've got life incumbent living inside of us. There's no life you, people outside of Jesus. Yes. That's his office. That's the great office. Life-giving substance. Praise God. So now I'm, I'm asking you, brother, brother Wears, come play the piano. I want us to stand. Let us bow just for a moment. Just close our eyes. And I want you to stop for a moment. I want you to stop for a moment. And think about it today. Think about it. Think about it. Think about this time. Think about this hour. Think about the reason that we're here tonight. Jesus. And how it affects our lives. Hallelujah. But God has opened up a door for us. Although Brother Charlie lived a very short time in Jesus, he baptized just about a few weeks ago. Verbally. To me, with his own ears, have heard his commitment. Heartfelt. 
how he's grown on to be in the hands of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your promise. How about us? Thank you, Jesus. That are here. That are left behind to witness these events. You know, both Mary and Martha said, Lord, had you been here, my brother would not have died. I want to tell you today, Jesus is not a follower from us tonight. He is here, and you will not die. All he's saying is you just believe. We just believe. He's life in comfort. He wants to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He wants to fill you with life. He wants to fill you with abundant life. Yes, Lord. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. And we want to, it is one for us to see the needs, the needs of our own lives Thank you, Jesus. here today. Thank you, Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we search our own hearts. Let every heart here today, everyone that is here, search our own hearts. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah. Our needs are different from each other. Some need healing in their heart. Yes, oh God. The spirit, their mind. Others need a refreshing in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Others need a Savior. They need salvation. Some need, oh God, to return. As it were to come home. As the word of God to see that is weary, come home. Earnestly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling all sin and come home. Why does he say that? Why is he calling? Because he is the life giver. He is the giver of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Once you think about that tonight for a moment, that I hear about. And if there's anything that we need to be rid of in our lives and in our hearts, Thank you. we can do that right now. We can ask God for forgiveness of these things. Yes, Lord. We could release those things to Him. We could cast it at His feet, and even at the foot of the cross. The Bible says, casting all your cares upon Him because He cares for you. He cares for you. Yes. But as we come to you this evening, as we humbly bow our heads and our hearts in your presence, we ask, oh God, that we would release, oh God, every bit of insensitivity, of heartbreak from our lives that we admit it that we lay down at your feet and we bring it to the cross your word declares you said cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you to rid yourselves of these things to make your heart right and ready to wash your soul all of these things Jesus can take care of for you and he is, he is a, Jesus is a gentleman as the Bible says, he, he said, Behold, I stand at your door and knock with any man would hear my voice and allow me in and let me in to his heart, to his life, to his temple. He said, I will come in and I will dine with him and eat with him and he shall eat with me. And we shall be brothers. But Father, I thank you today. I thank you for your word. Even for the word of truth. Yes, Lord. Yes, the word that's your life. Thank you. And Lord, as we begin to release these things, Lord God, from us, as we begin to deposit them yes. at your feet, I pray you that you would come, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And touch every one of us, Lord, by your spirit. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. To release now, if I pray thee, Father. It's every life and every heart. Oh, Power Jesus. of the incumbent spirit of the Holy Jesus. Ghost. That you would touch every heart now, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That you would touch every life. That you would fill up the dry spaces. Oh, Lord, oh God. That is.
been left you after like forgiveness. Water, you are the the holes in the gaps. You be filled are with the power of God. Even with the Holy Spirit. You are, all. You are our source. That we you could are be filled our with new life. You are our life, oh God. From the giver Jesus. of life. Who is Jesus? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord, oh God. Our life depends on you. I release the spirit of the Our life belongs to you, Jesus. In this room today, the advocate. <laughs> you are the one who will fight for us. And we are your children, Lord. I am your child, oh God, Jesus. Hallelujah, Hallelujah Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We will bear no evil, Lord, Jesus. We are the Lord, your righteousness and your own covenant. Oh, mighty God. A free spirit. Mighty God, mighty God, free spirit mighty God. You are greater than sin as my father. You are greater than sin. Hallelujah. We trust in you and have faith in you, Jesus, of our life, oh God. For you are the one who holds, oh God. We ask you to show yourself real. Jesus. Lives are yours. Hallelujah. And it's from you, God. Yes, Lord, oh God. Our life is in your hands. Lord, oh Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Of our 